bells on Bob Tail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing the sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells. Okay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. There is so much I love about Christmas. I love to sing Christmas songs. I love Christmas cookies. I love tacky house lights. And I love Christmas cookies. I love Christmas presents. And I love Christmas cookies. And I've always loved Christmas songs. And so when I was a kid, I loved to sing Jingle Bells and all the other Christmas songs. And now, as I look back, and those years are becoming more and more distant, I realize that lots of times, when you're a kid growing up, you're singing those Christmas songs, and there are many words that you don't know the meaning of. For instance, in Jingle Bells that we all just sang, Bells on Bobtail Ring. It's a nice alliteration, but what the heck is a bobtail? Anyone? <laughs> I thought that Bob Tail was one of the children on that old TV show, The Waltons. Remember The Waltons? Good night, Grandpa. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Bob Tail. <laughs> These confusing words in these wonderful old Christmas songs affect the carols too. Hark the herald angel. You know that one, right? Let's sing along. Hark the herald angel sing glory to the newborn king. Okay, stop. <laughs> when I was young, I thought that we were singing about an angel named Harold. Hark the herald angel. He must be one of the archangels. Angel Gabriel, angel Raphael, and now Angel Harold. <laughs> Perhaps the most confusing one of all is my favorite carol, and possibly your favorite carol as well, Silent Night. One year after midnight mass, I was very quiet on a car ride home, and mom noticed how quiet I was. And she asked, what's wrong, Felix? And I said, mom, why did we sing a song tonight? About a, about a guy named Round John Virgin. <laughs> Round John Virgin, mother. She said, ask your father when we get home. <laughs> that was the answer. I love all the Christmas songs, but I didn't always know the meanings of the words. And we use all kinds of words at Christmas that we don't use the rest of the year. Here's another Christmas word. We hear it every year in an activity story when it's proclaimed to us. And that word is swaddle. Swaddle. In Luke's magnificent account of the birth of the Messiah, he tells us that Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem. It became time for Mary to give birth while they were in Bethlehem. And since there was no room for them in the inn, she gave birth in a place where animals were fed, and she laid the newborn child in a manger. Ha, huh, that's another one of those Christmas words. Most of us don't know what a manger is, right? But if you studied French, you would know that manger means to eat, exactly. A manger in the Bible is a wooden trough where the animal's food is placed. And so Jesus, the bread of life, is placed in a feeding trough at the moment of his birth. But before Mary did that, she wrapped baby Jesus in swaddling clothes. We heard that twice in today's gospel. When I was a kid, I thought that sounded so cute, swaddling clothes. I got hand-me-down clothes, so I thought swaddling clothes were at least new but I had absolutely no idea what they were. It wasn't until much later that a mom filled me in on the details. Now, at least as I understand it, 
When you swaddle a baby, you wrap layer after layer of cloth around it and so that the baby can't move. The baby is completely bound. And when you are bound up like that in swaddling cloth, that means that you are fully dependent on someone else for everything. If you need something to drink, if you want to roll over, if you want to scratch your nose, someone else has to do it for you. Because you are helpless, you cannot do for yourself when you are swaddled. And now if St. Luke takes the time to mention swaddling twice, he's trying to tell us something important. Think of it this way. We Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that he is fully human and fully divine. And that Jesus, the divine one, is swaddled, which means that the God who created the universe is willing to become totally dependent on someone else. Just think about that. By being swaddled at birth, Jesus is entering into all of our experiences when we feel bound up. Jesus is willing to identify with all the moments of our lives when we feel helpless or unable to do for ourselves. Jesus is willing to be swaddled because I think you and I feel swaddled so often. Now, when we are kids, we know that we are dependent on others for everything, right? We depend on others to feed us, to protect us, to make our bad dreams go away. When we are young, Jesus is with us in all those moments of our recognized dependency. Then we grow up, and then we think that we have it all together, that we have all under control. But then things happen in life that make us feel swaddled, helpless. Like when we tried our best and we didn't get accepted. Or when we work hard but we didn't make the grade. Or when the person we love breaks our heart and there's nothing we can do to win them back. Or when addiction grabs a hold of us or a loved one. And here's one that we might be thinking about today on this Christmas day. When our family is not quite what we had hoped it would be. In these moments, we feel helpless and the swaddled Christ is with us. Because life really does bind us up and swaddle us at times. Like when an accident leaves us or a loved one unable to do what we have always done, or when fears about world events or fears about our jobs grip us with fear about our future, or when we are being treated unfairly and there's nothing we can do about it, or when we stand by the bed of a loved one as they take their last breath. Yes, modern medicine can work many miracles, but eventually, for every one of us, we reach a point when there's nothing more that can be done. And the sick person feels helpless, and their loved ones feel helpless, and we are all feeling swaddled. And we all want to make things better for everyone. We want to help create peace on earth. We want to increase justice for all, but there are moments when we all feel, how do we say it? That our hands are tied. Perhaps that's why Jesus is swaddled as a child in Luke's gospel. Perhaps that's why God is willing to become fully dependent on Mary and Joseph. Perhaps the Christmas story includes this tiny detail about the swaddling clothes. Because the Lord knows how often you and I feel swaddled, helpless. And maybe it's here in this tiny detail that we can begin 
to find peace, to find hope. When anything or anyone binds part of our life, Christ the Lord is standing next to us saying, I really do know how it feels to feel swaddled, to feel helpless. And I am going to go through this with you. Which brings me to one final point on this Christmas day. The Christmas stories begin with baby Jesus wrapped up in cloth, helpless and dependent. But please remember that at the end of the gospel, Jesus is swaddled in cloth again. After his crucifixion, Jesus is once again wrapped up tight in cloth, but not baby cloth, but burial cloth. The women who were with him in Calvary wrapped him, wrapped him tightly in a burial cloth and laid him in a tomb. And according to the Gospels, on the early morning on Easter Sunday, those cloths get unwrapped and they get thrown to the floor and Jesus rises free forever. Because of God's eternal love, not even the tight bonds of death can tie Jesus up. The tomb couldn't hold him down. Nothing could hold him down. And that free and faithful Jesus is with us this Christmas day in the Eucharist that we are celebrating. He wants to undo what binds you. He wants to heal what hurts you. He wants to unwind what grips you. He wants to forgive what aches you. The Prince of Peace wants you to have peace. He wants our world to have peace. Not even death could tie him down. And so nothing can hold us down either. And I think that's worth celebrating every season of the year. Merry Christmas. <laughs>